Welcome back everyone with your 5 p.m. update on Hurricane Ian. Uh, starting with the satellite imagery, you can see that Ian has moved ashore, moved ashore, made landfall earlier today. It's powerful category four hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. Uh, as it moves inland, you'll see the eye start to diminish, but don't let that fool you. It will still pack a formidable punch as it moves across the state of Florida uh, along the I-4 corridor over the next uh, couple of days. Uh, look at the radar imagery. You can see where it made landfall here uh, in and around. Uh, so Naples is down here. So just north of Naples, just north of Fort Myers in the Punta Gorda area. Um, and that's where we got the strongest flow of, of winds and got that, unfortunately, got that storm surge that we were predicting. Many of you have seen the footage on social media. It's uh, very sad to see it unfold. Um, and then it's probably starting to come up here in Fort Myers as well. So maybe Naples is, is out of the bullseye for the storm surge. Water should start to come down, but probably starting to come up pretty quickly um, in and around the Fort Myers area. And in fact, you can see that on our tide stay. So this is, this is an instrument that is measuring the, the height of the ocean. And look how rapidly it is rising, and this is going to continue as those winds continue to pile the water into those enclosed areas. And this is this is why storm surge is so dangerous, is because the water rise is is so quick, and you're seeing that play out on social media with people saying that the water came up by so many feet and, and very very quickly. Uh, so this is why storm surge is so dangerous. Remember now now we're getting into the, you know this this has probably happened so this is not so much as a forecast it's either happened or happening so I want to draw your attention a little bit up into this portion because this is the forecast this is the forecast that as Ian comes back out over the Atlantic and turns back to the northwest into Georgia and South Carolina they themselves are going to have a significant storm surge now these numbers might seem low relative to these larger numbers that we've been advertising in Florida, but don't let this fool you. This portion of the coastline is very low and flat, and these numbers will be very impactful if they, uh, in fact, are materialized. Storm surge warnings along the west coast of Florida, they're in effect as we speak, but I want to draw your attention up into this area. So north Florida, from about Palm Coast, northward through much of coastal South Carolina, including Savannah and Charleston, now under a storm surge warning, including, including, this is going to fool people, the St. John's River. So if you live along the St. John's River, you're not out of the woods just because you're not at the coastline. The, the actual ocean will push into the river and flood in sort of a counterintuitive way. So please, please, if you're watching us from here, uh, take any necessary action to protect you. I alluded to this earlier, as the storm moves across, cuts a swath across the Florida Peninsula, then emerges back out in the Atlantic and basically turns or hooks back into coastal Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, the blue here denotes tropical storm warning, so you can see just a huge swath of wind cast almost virtually across the entire state of Florida, the red hurricane warnings, so you can almost envision the core of the strongest winds punching right across the state. And this graphic, I think, really helps unpack it the best. The red here is the hurricane warning. This is where the, the greatest potential is for really damaging winds. The blue, the darker blue, tropical storm warnings, and then this lighter blue, the tropical storm watch. So what's interesting in this is how far the winds can go inland inland over South Carolina, possibly as far as Columbia. So these things aren't just a coastal phenomenon. If you're, if you're inland, you really have to pay attention with these winds as they, as they cut across the state of Florida and then back up into South Carolina. But the story I really want to start hounding now is the flooding potential. The flooding potential along the I-4 corridor of Florida. Look at this. If you've been following along, these numbers have gone up now in excess of 20 inches potential from about Tampa, or the, the 20 inches is in around Orlando, but 10 plus inches from Tampa to Orlando back to Jacksonville, which is why we have a high risk, a high risk for excessive rainfall or flooding. A high risk for flooding along these areas. You're not going to want to be driving around tomorrow because the roads could be flooded very, very, very dangerous. So I think that's the last graphic. That's it from the Hurricane Center. We'll be keeping you updated as this storm unfolds. Please, please be safe over the next couple of days.